Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q2 FY 2024 earnings conference call of Clean Science and Technology Limited. We have with us on the call Mr. Siddhar Sekchi, Exec Executive Director, Clean Science and Technology, Mr. Sanjay Parnekar, CSO, and Mr. Pratik Bora, Vice President. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Siddhar Sikji for his opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. I am happy to connect with you all of you again today to discuss the performance of our company for quarter two FY24. Let me start with giving you a little perspective on the business environment. The market continued continues to remain a buyer's market rather than seller's market during this quarter. The overhang of destocking continued during the quarter too. The overproduction in China has led to aggressive pricing of the products, thereby putting downward pressure on realization during this particular quarter. The demand in Europe and to some extent in the United States was unusually low. So to summarize, in quarter two, we did not see a strong, uh, strong recovery in our demands. On financial highlights, quarter on quarter comparison, on QOQ basis, the 4% decline in revenue was led by drop in realization across the three products. In fact, improved sales volumes limited the decline in revenue. Contribution on, of non-flagship products to revenue increased to 25% during this quarter. However, EBITDA margins continue to be strong at 42.4%. This leads to two important takeaways. One, product diversification and geography diversification has gradually started to reflect. And second, despite that, EBITDA margins continue to remain healthy. EBITDA margins are higher on QOQ basis by about a percent led by lower consumption prices. Fat margins are lower on QOQ basis due to lower non-operating income. Year-on-year -year comparison, revenues for quarter two FY24 declined by 27% to rupees 178 crore against rupees 245 crores during Q2 FY23. Volume degrowth and drop in realization both continue, contributed to 27% decline in revenue. EBITDA during Q2 FY24 decreased to rupees 75 crore against rupees 97 crore during Q2 FY23. Led by lower input prices and better product mix, company reported higher EBITDA margin of 42.4% compared to 39.8% during Q2 FY23. We are pleased to report that tax margins are higher at 29.1% during Q2 FY24 as against 27.9% during Q2 FY23. On standalone basis, PAT is rupees 52 crore against rupees 68 crore during Q2 FY23. Although the absolute PAT is lower, the PAT margin is higher, led by better gross margin and limited impact of negative operating leverage. On sales profile, Revenue contribution from performance chemical, pharma and agro intermediate, and FMCG chemicals was 67%, 19%, and 14% respectively. 
contributions for our pharma segment was impacted due to lower sales of Guayacol led by ongoing issues in certain international markets with regards to cough syrups. HALS 770 and 701 continue to demonstrate progressive improvement with revenue contribution coming in from export market as well during this quarter. We are pleased to report that during this quarter, the sales contribution from non-flagship products increased to 25%, despite that EBITDA margins were 42%. As we have been mentioning, that every product launched will go through following life cycle, stabilizing the production, securing approvals with clients, increasing the utilization levels, continually working towards improving yields and production efficiencies in that drop, and invariably the outcome of our process is product stewardship which leads to better return on capital employed. A little on CAPEX update, we have incurred CAPEX of 165 crore during this quarter, of which 155 crore were invested in our new subsidiary CFCL. Total investment into CFCL till date is approximately 275 crores. The progress with construction activity at the subsidiary Clean Phenochem CFCL is as planned. We expect the water trials to commence during this quarter, while commercial production to kick start during quarter four. We are happy to report that we have finally delivered on our commitment of approximately rupees 300 crore capex during to a CFCL to commission by Q4 FOI24 with entire capex to be funded through internal accruals. We are also in process of erecting a state-of-the-art pilot facility which is expected to commission over the next four weeks. This pilot facility will considerably strengthen the transition process from lab to pilot to commercial scale production. Our R&D efforts are fructified by our strong in-house engineering and project teams, which help us create global scale and automated state-of-the-art manufacturing facilities at a very competitive price and in time effective way. This boosts our return on assets and reduces our time to market considerably. A little bit on ESG. We continue to work towards ESG actively through, deliver, through delivering products with lower carbon footprint, continually evaluating use of alternative raw materials, fuels, and increasing our share in green power. We are pleased to announce that we have successfully cleared responsible care audit. We are now responsible care certified company. We will soon be publishing our maiden sustainability report and would be happy to have your review comments. We have now set a next five year ESG target for ourselves. Details of same will be elaborated in BRSR report. Outlook regarding new product development, we recently performed Bhumi Pujan at CFCL for construction of a new chemical plant for manufacturing pharma slash agro intermediates. We will be sharing the details in due course and we continue to execute our growth plans as committed. Thank you so much. Uh, should we open up for questions? Sure. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question? May please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Arshad Joshi from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. 
Hi, Siddharth, and thanks for the opportunity and season's greetings to you all. Uh, so I have a few questions. Uh, firstly, if you can explain the sequential increase we have seen in the power costs this quarter. Right. Yeah. Hi. So during this quarter, the production in for at our flagship products increased by over 25 percent. However, that increase in production did not totally reflect in the sales because of lower realization, and that is the reason the power cost has increased considerably during this quarter. We expected to normalize by over 100 bips in due course. Sure, sir. Thanks. And secondly, sir, wanted to check on a few accounts you were working on. Number one, the status of our backward integration initiatives in health through the basic acid. Uh, any comments on that front, sir? So far, I mean, we we worked on R and D to establish a process to develop our own in-house basic acid using castor oil. However, the economies of scale do not permit us for the time being to invest into uh, production of basic acid because the price of these. uh products are currently quite subdued coming from the current manufacturer based out of india and china as well got it sir uh, and sir secondly uh, a clarification on uh, the challenges that we are seeing in boy call uh, in the previous con call we were kind of uh, trying to qualify our products with some chinese and taiwanese customers to sort of divert our sales from china uh has that gained any traction in our current uh, business environment so we are one of the largest supplier of glycol to the china market i mean uh from india of course so we are approved in the uh, chinese market taiwan customer is a little sticky customer with the competitor and it might take a little longer uh to get our approvals however last year we would have or this year sorry this year we would have shipped Only about less than 10 percent of their annual demand, but we expect in 24 calendar year that should increase a little bit, but not to the extent which I would have wanted. So we would look at some other avenues to sell glycol, particularly in the vanillin market in China. Got it, sir. Uh, so just one last, if I can squeeze in. Uh, so the recent. Uh, uh, a pharma slash agro intermediate uh, plant that you are working on is this uh, the same one that we had spoken of earlier with respect to a 200 crore uh, capex that we had earmarked for some products if you can elaborate uh... yes so this is a part of that capex so this is the first product out of the health uh, which i mean which we had discussed uh, of about 200 crore capex so this is the first molecule out of that Understood, sir. Great, sir. Thank you, and wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Ashwik Jain from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Hello, this is Sanjay. Can you hear me? Yes, absolutely, Sanjay. Yeah. Hi, uh, uh, sir. Uh, couple of questions. Um, first, on the agro pharma intermediate that we have started. Can you elaborate that uh, in this 200 crores of capex? I believe it will be a multi-purpose plant. Uh, what kind of product are we working? Um, will it be sold in the domestic market, or or it is to cater to the uh, exports market? Uh, any any uh, number of product are we working? More color around that will be really helpful. And what is the asset turn? I think we have said two time asset turn earlier. Uh, do we stick to that? So 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 let me answer this. So this. is this block would be 30 crore of capex this is a single product dedicated line and we expect a revenue of about 100 crore out of it okay and, and uh, okay and it will be agro or pharma pharma okay got it got it in our in our uh, it's like performance agro slash pharma and fmcg so this falls under the intermediate of pharma and agro but uh, are we supplying what is the end application or it is it, it has a multiple application it has multiple application for pharma for the farm got got and the 200 crores of block uh, that we have started now to work on uh, do we have a product portfolio over there so out of 230 crore is in, in this correct balance 70 crore is remaining so we have some products in pipeline so you will have to give me one more quarter 
to confirm those plans. Got it. Got it. That's clear. Uh, second, uh, you, you earlier mentioned that we had seen a healthy volume growth, but couldn't completely offset the drop in realization for it to reflect in revenue. Can you give us more flavor in terms of what is the kind of volume growth uh, we have seen? Uh, that's number one. And number two, can you also help us understand what is the contribution of health within the new product? We said that 25% of the revenue is new product. But can you can you help us understand where are we today? Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll give you that. So let me answer the second question first. Out of in that 25%, these are the new products apart from health are PBHQ and DCC. So these okay. were smaller in contribution because these plants, uh, at least the PBHQ plant just started about a year ago. So all those qualifications with the needed customers was complete and now we see uh, volumes pick up. And same thing happened with DCC where we were competing with the Chinese, where we, we could, we had some product, uh, sorry, process improvement further, which has made us further more competitive and emerge or enlarge our market share within India and uh, Europe and a little bit into Japan. Got it. Uh, and and where are we in PBQ? PBQ boss, we are still stuck. I think we will still need some more time, but the, but the efforts are still going on, and we hope that in the next few weeks we should have some decent uh, outcome out of it. But we are working on it for sure. Got it. And uh, health? Have we have we, what is the have we started booking revenues in the health as well? Yeah, or? We have started booking revenue. We have done about, I think we are monthly about 40, 50 tons per month we are selling. And uh, in fact, we are very pleased that today, I mean, today we've got our first European container load order. So we'll be the first Indian company to export this product to the, to the European uh, territory. And uh, gradually we are seeing export market also showing some interest. And Indian markets will keep continue to grow for us. Got it. And, uh, and this will be what, 701 exports market no, or is it 770 only? So, so, so of course both, but 770 is majorly what I'm discussing. So that's a bigger market compared to 701. 701, we're happy to inform that we've got our first uh, order from China and of course, uh, and also from Taiwan. Got it, got it. So, so, so the validation time, which took about a year, I mean, six to eight months time, because this is a very specific application, is now completed with large buyers, and now these are trial orders and now commercial, and getting into bigger commercial orders. Fair enough. Uh, and last question from my side is on the China situation. I think uh, for us to completely revive, I think China has to come back. Uh, we have a 64% revenue decline there. Uh, how are we reading? What are our buyers telling us in terms of Chinese situation? Uh, do you think it will it will drag remain for another couple of quarter, or you think it will take slightly longer than that? See, it will take up for definitely it will take at least two more quarters, including quarter three, and maybe a little bit of quarter four, or maybe totally quarter four. But now we are gradually seeing demand slightly picking up. But of course, China is also interdependent on Europe like we are, because eventually their end products are also supplied to Europe and the Americas. So since Europe is absolutely down, and US also is not at the best, hence we are seeing lower demand across all the segments globally. You don't see yourself getting replaced by any local vendor in China. That, that risk is completely ruled out, right? Not at the moment, boss. But, but uh, I, to the best of my understanding, or not at, at the moment, there isn't any competition in China for this product. Got it. Uh, that's it from my side. Uh, thanks for answering all those questions patiently and best of luck for the coming quarter. Thank you so much, Sanjeev. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Hussain from Carnelian Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Yes, uh, yes, I just wanted to understand that uh, 300 crore keeping that we have done in the uh, clean finochem uh, subsidiary. 
So what will be the asset turn there and uh, how fast we'll be able to ramp up that that part? See, the, the asset turn should be between 2.5 to 2.8 and mm -hmm. the entire capex to come to 80% capacity utilization will easily take between 2 to 3 years. So, so we can't reach it 200%? Sorry? In this one? So, uh, so this capacity cannot reach the max utilization will be at 80 percent, or we can reach 200 percent. No, no, no. Typically, in chemical plants, 80, 85 percent is is a very good capacity utilization. See, there are boiler breakdowns, there are uh, you know equipment breakdown, there are maintenance breakdown. So, typically, 80, 85 percent is the is a good norm. Correct, correct, correct. And so, this uh, this guy call issue that is there globally. So how uh, how long do you see this pain to continue, and uh, when we see the demand reviving, coming back? Is there any any uh, any understanding on that front? We are also regularly, you know, looking at the market, and we still believe it will take at least another quarter or so for this. I mean, the the problems which have happened with the cup syrup manufacturers within, I mean, from India. I think it will at least take a quarter more for all of them to, you know, to clear off their names and the demand to again come back to India. Okay, got it, got it, got it. And so lastly, on this agrochemical intermediate that uh, that you said we are uh, investing across 200 crores in this new agrochemical intermediate. So, uh, so any specific uh, products that are there, uh, will it be margin accurate? Some color on that, if you can share with us. Well, how it will be uh, in times to come? Even Sanjesh asked the same question. The answer was, it is not 200, it is 30 crore. Okay. It is a pharma intermediate. The, the revenue expected is about 100 crore. And major market is Indian market. So, okay. out of 230 crore is 170 crore. The products are still to be announced to the market. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. So, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Jason Sones from IDBI Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, and my question is in terms of, sir, you know, what's happened is uh, our volumes have basically ticked off or had a steep fall from the past year. And uh, what I believe is our product goes into uh, the critical application is super absorbent polymers, which uh, have various applications. So I expect that demand should be, you know, sort of stable in nature. But uh, of course, there's a steep demand fall. Now I can see that you know China has uh, markedly slowed down. There is a steep increase in interest rates all over the world as well, uh, which is having an impact. But could you give us some more color as you've spoken about in the presentation that two thirds is basically a volume drop. So what could what 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 is the exact reason for this such a sharp fall in volumes? More color on that. Just I wanted more some more color on that. The point is yes. that there is also a terminology called as de stocking. Right. It's similar in pharma industry, if you see the revenues or volumes have dropped. It is not that people have stopped taking medicine. Yes. The reason is people had overbooked capacity or overbooked uh, product from us in the past. Assuming there would be a product shortage or, or there would be logistics issue, which that's what I mentioned on my uh, starting remark that this destocking continued to happen during quarter two. And that is the reason why the offtake has been lower than, I mean, than it was in the past. Okay, sure, sir, sure. Yeah, sure, sure. Thanks for that. And uh, so, just wanted to, uh, just a clarification. This clean final came, uh, uh, basically, this, uh, whatever capex you're putting into uh, clean final chem, is that particularly going to be only for health? No, sir. Basically, okay. clean final, it's a very large facility. I mean, the, right. the land is about 35 odd acres. There will be at least five or six more facilities like HALS to come in there. HLS okay. is just one part of the entire block, but because it is a greenfield project, we have to invest in admin block, in warehouse, in ETP, in utility block, in solvent storage. So, right. so the entire thing is building up. 
But like if you see the new facility, which uh, the new pharma intermediate which we are starting, the only production block cost is only about 30 odd crores, which will give us the revenue of 100 crores because all the other uh, uh, ancillaries are made with the health. I hope I am able to explain you. Yeah, sure, sir. So health is only a part of it. You are, of course, going to do more, more capacity expansion in that large piece of land. Basically, that's what you said. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there will yes. be a lot more products coming into that facility. Right, right, right. Sure. And so lastly, just wanted to know if you can share uh, go quality, sir. How much percentage of revenue does it contribute to? Individual product, individual product contribution we don't share. Uh, we don't share individual product contribution, though. Mm -hmm. Okay, sure. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Those were my questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankur Periwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Siddharth. Uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first, on the uh, you know the sales part. Uh, now, Q on Q basis, you did mention that there is a volume recovery. Uh, just curious, uh, you know, from a volume decline, what we saw in the last quarter, how has been the improvement, and any specific you know business segment wherein the improvement is more or, or less out of the three segments. So uh, in quarter, this is expectation, right, of quarter three. So we feel pharma should be good enough, but other, we are still trying to understand because it is, plus it's a November and December month, which are typically slow because everybody is on the mode of reducing stock across the world. So November and typically are typically slower months for us. I think the best judgment we will be able to give you on the next con call where we'll have Q4 uh, picture more clear to us. Sure. Uh, uh, my, my question actually was more specific to this quarter. So 4% Q1 Q decline, right? Wherein you said volumes have grown. So obviously there is a decline in realization here. But from a volume decline perspective, uh, the, the volume that we were doing in, in the last quarter versus this quarter, uh, is there any specific segment which is driving or it is pretty broad based? Uh, no, so FMCG segment uh, boosted, uh, we, we saw volume growth and uh, DCC and TBHP also as you mentioned, we have uh, witnessed yes. a volume growth. So volume led increase in sales during this quarter was 8 crore. Realizations impacted by negative 15 crore and that's how we see a negative 7 crore quarter on quarter decline. Sure, sure. That, that's helpful. Uh, secondly, on our gross margins, uh, now on a year-on-year -year basis or Q1Q -Q basis, there have been a, a pretty decent improvement. And uh, this is when, you know, 25% uh, of the revenues are coming from the, uh, the non-core part, right? Uh, the new products, the non-flagship products have contributing. So uh, will it be fair to say that whenever the demand bounces back sharply, uh, the margin jump could be even higher? Or, or are there efficiency, uh, efficiencies that we have derived in the non-flagship product wherein the margin accretion of these products is also strong now? No, it is, it is decent enough, but I think it will, be, it will be wise to consider these margins only for these non-core products. Okay, fair enough. Uh, on the health pricing, uh, you did mention that, you know, and, and congrats for the, the new orders from China, Taiwan, as well as uh, 770, uh, you know, getting good traction. Uh, how are we pricing these products vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, I'm presuming BSA will be the largest, you know, competition here. So how are we pricing our products vis-a-vis -vis vis -vis BASAF? See, BASAF is one, pro, uh, one of the suppliers. Today, the prominent pricing level guys are the Chinese. So today, we have to mark our products at par with the Chinese prices. And we have no choice but to mark closer to them to grow our market share, even slightly lower to China to get more market share within India. Correct, which is, which is fair. Uh, and from an operating performance perspective, I know it is still early days, uh, but uh, going ahead, we should expect process-led efficiencies and the pricing being the same, or maybe the product mix itself will change and contribute better on the margins front. Oh, I think one, even like I mentioned during my talk also that China has uh, cut prices across all products and all segments, which yeah. might improve in the future, which I'm not very sure about whether it will happen in Q3 or Q4, but that should happen. So once these prices, in, once Chinese start raising their price, we will be able to also raise our prices, number one. And number two, starting January, when we'll have 
the other range coming in that will give our customers more uh, uh, i mean i mean they will be able to buy more products from us and that will help us to inc- reduce our fixed cost by adding more production i mean selling more volumes uh, from our facilities fair enough operating efficiency is basically great uh, just just last bookkeeping question on the working capital bit uh, the inventory days have short up a bit any specific uh, thing to read over there uh no we could actually inventory value value wise the remain same closer to the march number right i mean uh, because you're calculating it out either on the cost uh-huh. or uh, on the raw material purchase that is why optically the number of days looks higher but if you look value wise it's almost in line with the march number so so volume wise the numbers would be higher because you know the raw material prices have come down as well so yes yes so it's essentially the wip stock which has gone up okay okay because of the dispatches that we have been doing now yeah that that explains uh, that's it from my side thank you and all the best thanks thank you boss thank you the next question is on the line of abhijit akela from kotak securities please go ahead yeah uh, good afternoon and thank you so much uh, for taking my question so just with uh, regard to the outlook for the second half of uh, sy24 um you know given that it's likely to take another couple of quarters almost for demand to come back so uh, you know should we sort of expect that uh, uh, i mean volumes gradually pick up from the levels of 2q over the next two quarters or should we you know continue to work with these volumes and pricing also remains around these levels you know how would you sort of uh, you know expect things to shape up in the next two quarters no boss no forward looking statement we'll see as it comes because we are also amid trying to understand where the markets and where the world is leading to okay okay fair enough uh then just on the uh, 2q results uh i'm sorry i wasn't exactly able to understand the reason for the increase in power cost on an absolute basis uh, i guess you were mentioning maybe that it percentage terms it's gone up for uh, you know some reason but why the absolute increase quarter on quarter and also if you could uh, please just share the uh breakdown of volume versus price on a year on year basis for 2q if that's possible sure so first on power and fuel cost uh, actually the production has increased for the key products by over 25% uh however that production increase is not reflecting in, reflecting in sales because the inventory has also gone up and also for the sales the realization has come down okay but the in, with the increase in production the power and fuel cost has shot up and as a percentage of sales because sales is, uh, sales number is lower so as a percentage of sales it, it looks even little higher okay okay so this also explains the increase in inventory in that case uh, is that right exactly exactly okay understood thank you and also yeah the volume versus price uh, breakdown for the quarter year on year year on year yes please if possible year on year quarter on quarter a year on year so of 27% decline uh, primarily it is led by yeah almost 50-50 volume uh, and price volume and realization led got it thank you uh, and just one last thing from my side um, uh, i believe the agro pharma project that he had announced a couple of quarters back right that for which we have just done the bhumi pujan if i am not mistaken the original schedule was maybe to uh, you know start construction around july august and then commission the plants around 2q of fy25 so are we still on track for that commissioning timeline or is is it going to take a little bit longer than that you are absolutely right we are announced a little earlier but i think we got delayed because of this market situation and we were evaluating ourselves but with bhumi pujan happening on 20th of october you can calculate about 9 months from today the plant should be up and running okay and then the same time frame for the subsequent products as well uh, as and when we announced them No, no, no. We have not announced them. Uh, we are still under evaluating, but hopefully we shall start announcing as and when we move forward with those. Right, but it will again take nine to twelve months, is it, to commission those as well? Typically, a block for us takes about nine months. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Arun Prasad from Avanda Spark. Please go ahead. thanks uh, for the opportunity uh, siddharth uh, my first question is on this uh, uh, de-stocking phase that we are talking about 
in last 15 years you would have seen this kind of a situation a uh, couple of times so from that experience can you help us understanding this destocking to say restocking what is the typical timeline uh, in terms of say months or weeks uh, you have seen in the past so typically to my understanding it should be anywhere between 2 to 3 quarters see this time it is also more there have been two reasons one people have really overstocked because of covid and assuming there will be logistics issues and all that and the second big problem happened was the demand collapse when the world opened up so it has been a two sided war so we expect it should be anywhere between 2 to 3 quarters of this these talking depending on region to region company to company and product to product okay uh, when you say demand collapse uh, that you are seeing across all your say top three products or it is uh, more specific to uh, more like a break on situation or uh, where you know there is an uncertainty whether it will come back or it is more like a, uh, a temporary setback See, it was more predominantly in the performance segment it was more predominant in performance chemical segment but but fortunately unfortunately that accounts for the major portion of our revenues which is about 65 to 67 percent we did not see so much these talking issue in pharma intermediate or in fmcg segment okay uh, because our understanding is if you see mhq which which majorly goes into super absorbent polymers uh, uh, though there may not be any growth it, it is more or less uh, kind of a very resilient in, in consumer demand will be there so uh, so is it really a, a, a demand setback in terms of uh, is it a demand setback or there is a market share loss that's that's a key question there see if it was a market share loss you would have known for sure uh, but i think uh, maybe a little bit plus minus 3 4 5 percent i am not able to gauge to that extent but what had happened is because performance chemical becomes the because becomes the cheap i mean the lowest in the priority of a purchase manager but it is one of the most important item so he doesn't want to stop his production or miss his production because of lack of performance chemical so i feel there is more stocking of these performance chemical because these are the tiniest item in the purchase list you know so when these stocking happened these items were far more in their warehouse than the major key raw material is my anticipation of this entire situation hence we saw more problems in performance chemical rather than pharma intermediates or agro uh, in pharma agro or the fmcg segment right i understood and then and looking at the november num october numbers in terms of monthly volume how far you are from say uh, uh, typically that you will see this kind of you will see the volumes in this october november december quarter how far we are from the uh, say steady state numbers in terms of volume i think that i'll be able to tell you in our february call <laughs> okay uh, my 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 second question is on your uh, uh, commentary on the non core uh, products like uh, ebhq and dcc um, we have seen fairly uh, 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 volatility in the in the the demand of uh, these products uh, or there is i would say some kind of a seasonality is that is there so this what you are seeing in this last quarter it is more sustainable or still we will be seeing seeing some ups and downs on this so these are not cyclical products because tbhq is used as a stabilizer in edible oil business and uh, dcc is a pharma intermediate for valacyclovir which goes into arm it's a pharma product so these are typically decent volume i mean steady steady condition product I and mean, steady uh, supply products these are not cyclical at all. Uh, so, so that means what we are seeing, the demand uptick that we are seeing this in this quarter, that I think you, what you are saying is sustainable. Uh, I mean, you can take plus minus twenty percent, uh, but but these are not cyclical for sure. Right. Okay. Okay, understood. And then, and if TBHQ is going to be your uh, uh, major product, I mean, can become potentially the major project, uh, major product. Uh, your dependence on HQ will also go up. Yeah, we have dependence on HQ, and all products we manufacture are, are important products for us. I mean, 
we will never manufacture a product which is not important to us right right but but do you have any process uh, which can take care of the hq production in case this becomes big so today it is quite abundantly ab- abundantly available from india china uh, japan united states europe so today we have uh, no issues in procuring these raw material and and the prices which we are able to get these are also quite competitive compared to our competitors okay understood and and finally on halls uh, uh, you spoke about the export market um, can you uh, uh, give a little bit more color on where we are in terms of building relationship the say end customer and distributor what are the uh, pushback key pushbacks that you are getting and uh, how we are going to uh, uh, make roads in these markets see we are actually in a dating phase with our customer they are evaluating us we are evaluating them you know we are trying to show them what best we can do for them they are not willing to totally believe us they want to evaluate us more you know, it is all dating thing happening and i think it will take few quarters for the marriage to happen and and this is typically a, a direct relationship with the customer no distributor involved in these products or how it is no, no, because uh, say, say for in, instance in india we have direct relationship with large customers we also have distributor models because some customer i mean lot of small customers prefer to get the product in in a day's time uh, same is in the case with europe we have distributor model and also we are speaking to some large customers if they can uh, if we can yeah hello hello something got stuck man uh so we are able to hear you please proceed yeah that was my answer boss oh all right all right to that thank you very much all the best thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of manan poladia from mkp securities please go ahead hi sir congratulations on a decent set uh, am i audible sir absolutely right sir so uh, my question is firstly on the uh, M- uh, pbhq health side what i want to understand is uh, you said that about 25% of the business is quarter is basically from uh, the new products right which sounds quite interesting if you could quantify that going forward for the next 3 or 4 quarters per se uh, how much you expect for them to contribute to your top line in terms of absolute terms and percentage of revenue terms see i think it is See, this is the first quarter when our when we have non flagship products has 75% and we have grown our new products to 25%. Of course, since we are not raising capacities of our flagship product at the moment, so all the growth which will keep coming would be from the newer product. So subsequently, in each quarter and quarter, you will start seeing that our flagship product percentage. to revenue will start coming down and these newer products will start contributing more and more right so just to give you exact quarter and exact correct. absolute number but typically if you see if we are able to start our hls with an investment of about 200 or 250 or crore to begin the plant in january and so let us assume we will have that sales coming up so when these sales numbers start coming up my flagship product numbers in comparison will start i mean the percentage will keep uh, of flagship will keep reducing and non flagship product will start increasing correct sir i understand that, that makes a lot of sense just a short follow up on that so you expect this trend to continue even after your guaycol capacities come back to uh, more utilization right yeah 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 i mean guaycol is a one off case and but we don't expect that that will change the entire scenario and guaycol is still being produced because it is a co produced Co-product for us. Correct, correct, right, sir. Also, so just one last question on the capex side. You said that you've done an, another 150 crores this quarter, and we have about 250 crores on the balance sheet, right? Uh, what are our capex plans for, let's say, the next three fiscals? So there will be more projects which are coming up. We have anticipated, or we have earmarked additional about 170, 180 or crores, which right. will be done, which we will announce probably in the next. One to two quarters for the products which we will start with the uh, with that investment. Correct, and so that will all be financed by internal accruals, correct? Absolutely, 
absolutely and everything will be happening through our internal accruals we are sitting on cash of 250 or crore so right so so the new uh, new capex will also happen through our internal accruals correct correct thank you sir thank you so much sir thank you sir thank you the next question is on the line of krishan parwani from jm financial please go ahead yeah hi siddharth ji uh, thank you for uh, taking my question just one from my side i think you mentioned that uh, your health sales uh, have reached 40 50 tons per month so just wanted to understand what's your internal target let's say by end fy24 and uh, start of uh, fy25 200 tons sorry that is one product in in i mean that is my target i don't know how much i'll be able to achieve by end of 25 right so you are talking about say probably march 25 our target is to sell this product per month and new products of this series should also start selling uh, so we have a big target in front of us okay perfect uh, that was helpful uh, thank you for answering my question and wish you a very happy diwali in advance i uh, wish you the same both happy diwali Thank you. The next question is on the line of Rohit Nagraj from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so in your opening remarks, you mentioned that uh, there has been a pricing pressure uh, across most of the products. So have we seen those prices uh, coming down to the pre-COVID levels? And what is uh, your sense in terms of whether these prices will stabilize at these levels? You mentioned that once China... come back to normal so probably the uh, pricing will move but in the intervening period uh, what is your sense in terms of how the pricing uh, will behave thank you See, to my sense and to my best of my understanding the prices which we were offering in quarter 2 were one of the lowest prices we have seen over the last several several years so i do not see further discounting of price unless unless something new comes up and and the commodity prices further or the crude oil prices drops further and and you know the demand is an issue then the prices might have to further lower but but to my understanding the prices should not lower beyond this point is my sense of this business sure sir that's all from my side and best of luck sir thank you A reminder to the participants: anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to the management for their closing comments. So, thank you so much for all. I mean, for your time and to understand the performance of our. Uh, of our company clean science and technology um again wishing all of you in advance a very happy diwali and a very happy and safe and healthy diwali thank you so much take care thank you members of the management team ladies and gentlemen on behalf of clean science and technology limited that concludes this conference call we thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you